Good morning students. As we have done in the last class, something on DNA. You remember that. Did you study that? Because yesterday I gave you in the last class about DNA as hereditary material, various experiments were done. And think about that time, during that time where the initiation of all the molecular, molecular biological experiments have started. During then, many scientists were involved in the production or studying how exactly this has to be proved. One I told you Lederberg's experiment, the first Griffith experiment I told that, it is, he did not make identify which exactly is the material required for or which is transferring the characters, right? But every almost came to a conclusion it is DNA because other content like proteins or RNA are not involved in genetic transfer, they are not acting like a transformation principle. That means only DNA is involved. But the highest means 100% confident way that DNA is hereditary material that was given by another set of experiment in 1952. That was I told you almost 1933 to 44 that age it was happening. Now this experiment we write under their names Hershey and Chase experiment. There are two scientists Hershey Chase experiment. So they used a different technique. What they did is they took for their experiment bacteriophages. What are bacteriophages? Bacteriophages are the virus that infect bacteria. The bacteriophage they used for this experiment was T2 phase. Bacteriophage T2. Right? This bacteriophage attacks the E. coli bacteria, Escherichia coli. The bacteria name is Escherichia coli E. coli bacteria. So here is, these are the E. coli bacteria to which they attack. This is the E. coli bacteria. Okay? So how exactly the virus will multiply? I hope you have studied in first PUC the reproduction in virus. One of that is the lytic life cycle or means lysogenic life cycle. Lytic life cycle or lysogenic life cycle both will indicate that whenever a virus attacks a bacteria, it sits on the bacteria like this and injects its DNA into the bacteria. This is a virus, this is a bacteria. Then using the bacterial machinery, it will produce its copies and produce all its cells. Then it will be ready to produce all the children when they break open, they come out. Right? That is, we call it as a lytic life cycle of bacteriophage. Right? So that thing they used it here, but what they did is they, they labeled separately the bacteriophage contents. In one type of bacteriophage, they labeled the DNA. In another type of bacteriophage, they labeled the protein. Right? Understand how cleverly they did this. So in one of the bacteriophage, the labeled part is the phosphate. You can see this P32 was labeled. P32 that is a radioactive or labeled phosphate. This was labeled in DNA in one of the bacteriophage. In another bacteriophage, protein was labeled with S35, right? That is P32, this is S35. Correct, you correctly you have to write their names. What are the labeled protein or labeled uh, DNA? Labeled protein had S35, their labeled DNA had P32 because normally DNA contain phosphate group and protein contain the S sulfate group in normally in their amino acids. Now, in the first set of experiment, this particular bacteriophage that was labeled with S35 was allowed to infect the E. coli bacteria. It entered inside it, it multiplied its DNA and it formed all the protein codes, everything. And they formed number of babies or because of virions, these head and other things, all they are separately produced. And that is produced. Uh, total multiplication of virus happened. Now, after infection, once they started multiplying, forming number of copies, it was the whole bacteria was blended. Blended in the sense, like mixed, grinded, grinded to separate out the cell wall of the bacteria from the DNA of the bacteria and where it has infected actually. Then after agitation and centrifugation, after separating agitation, breakdown, 
they centrifuged it so that the hard thing will go down and supernatant will be left. So once you centrifuge it, you find one hard pellet at the bottom and light supernatant at the tip or at the upper part. Normally the one that settles is DNA, right? That forms on small pellet. Pellet is a small tablet like that. And when I observed this DNA pellet was not showing any wavelengths. That means the bacteriophage, whatever it has infected, it had protein coat which was labeled and that DNA once entered the bacteria, it could not take it. Therefore, DNA is not a hereditary material. Here it is. Protein coat was labeled here. You can see here. Radioactive S35 is seen in the supernatant which contained protein. Means only the protein coat was labeled here. DNA was not labeled. Therefore, here protein is not the one which is carrying the character. In the second group, you can see here radioactivity or radioactive labeled DNA, then P32 labeled, it is DNA. Where it infects the E. coli bacteria, here it will multiply and form number of copies. And again, when it is blended and vegetation and centrifugation happens, DNA from a small pellet at the base and supernatant has always protein. Both sides, upper supernatant is protein. But this radioactivity was not seen in the protein coat, it was seen in the, the P32 that is in DNA. Therefore, DNA was detected in the cells of bacteria. That means DNA is only carrying the characters, not the protein coat. This indicates clearly that DNA is the one that carries the hereditary material. It is the hereditary material that transfers the characters from parents to their offsprings. So this Hershey Chase experiment with the drawing you have to explain step by step you will get 5 mark question. <coughs> they will ask you with a experiment with an experiment by Hershey Chase prove that DNA is a hereditary material or name the experiment with which DNA was proved to be hereditary material using bacteriophage. If they say bacteriophage only you have to write this. If they say it is the general way, then you can even write Griffith and Avery's experiment. Two experiments they do, right? Here one experiment which proved that the hereditary material was is DNA in all the organisms. Right? So this drawing you take it out, I just move away, then afterwards we will go to the next part. Finally, I hope you are done with this. Let us start with the new unit in this that is called as its name is DNA replication. So, what is the meaning of replication? Right? Think about it. Replication is nothing but doubling of DNA or DNA duplication. So, we are studying the molecular basis of inheritance. Therefore, we will learn everything about DNA and everything about RNA. So, next part is DNA replication. Okay. What is replication of DNA? So, it is nothing but the doubling of DNA. Why the DNA will double? Right? Normally, whenever the cells undergo cell division, the original mother DNA will transfer to both the daughter DNA, both the, both the daughter cells equally in mitotic cell division. Right? That time, suppose one cell is multiplying, a bacterial cell is multiplying or a human cell is multiplying. Whatever genes were there, in the mother cell should be transferred equally to both of the daughter cells. So, if DNA is there in the mother, mother cell, it should have equally transferred to both of the daughter cells. Means, before it transfers and before it divides, there is an important function for DNA to double itself. Right? It should form two copies of itself so that one will go to the daughter cell 1, one will go to daughter cell 2. Right? But the question is whether the DNA doubling happens 
by totally into two first only or one one copy is formed. That is how DNA replication was studied. So imagine this is a cell. Okay. This has DNA. Okay. I'll write up mother DNA first. This is the mother DNA. Okay. This is the mother DNA. It formed the two daughter cells, right? Two daughter cells. This should send its DNA copies to both. So one experiment or one method proposal say that complete mother DNA after doubling will go to one of the daughter cell and newly formed DNA will go to another daughter cell. I Means before the cell division DNA has doubled in such a way that after the doubling of DNA the daughter cells both of the daughter cells although they get the same amount of DNA one will get fully mother DNA, one will get fully the daughter DNA. This is the mother DNA. This is the, the DNA copy. One DNA copy from mother, this is the DNA copy from the mother. But this is explaining that the complete mother DNA will be there in one of the daughter cell. In another daughter cell, fully newly formed DNA will be entering. This is called as a conservative method of replication. Earlier they proposed this method. It must be, it may be conservative method. Means mother DNA is conserved fully in one of the daughter cell. But later Watson Crick proposed another method of replication. Imagine this is a double strand DNA. It has double strand DNA mother cell. It is a mother cell. Mother cell. Okay. Now whenever it divides into two daughter cells, two daughter cells according to the second type each daughter cell will get only one copy of the mother DNA and one will be newly formed DNA this is a new DNA and mother DNA strand whatever is there this DNA strand is called template strand template this is template and newly formed one is called as the Complementary strand. Okay. So, this was the second proposal where mother DNA is half conserved in one, half conserved in the another daughter cell. And they call this as the semi conservative replication. Okay. So, this was given by Watson and Crick. This was earlier, other scientists they thought it must be maybe conservative replication. So, what is the semi conservative replication explained? According to semi conservative rep replication, right? Mother DNA, before forming two daughter cells, undergo doubling in such a way that the two daughter cells which are formed will get one original mother strand DNA and one newly formed strand called complementary strand. In another daughter cell also, one will be mother DNA strand, we call it the template strand. Another strand is newly formed called as a complementary strand. So, this is, me. This it's mean, it means, it is half conserved, semi means half. Conservation happens only half, not full. Therefore, the name is semi-conservative replication which is given by Watson Crick. But later, scientists, namely, Mieselson and Stahl, and Stahl, they proved that replication is semi-conservative, not the conservative type. How they did it, that I will give you at the end of this. Right? At the end of this experiment, I can explain you how exactly they proved. They used the labeled nitrogen basis. Right? Before the cell division, they added labeled nitrogen bases to this. And what is the use of that? The newly formed DNA, suppose it is forming new copy, then all the nitrogen bases it is using for the formation of new copy should have the labeled nitrogen bases. Right? Then when you observe the two daughter cells, if in both the daughter cells only one strand has labeled nitrogen base, one was not having labeled nitrogen base, that means one is old, one is new. Therefore, it should be a semi-conservative type of 
replication. Did you understand? So once you prove this, this is disproved. So there were two methods. One is conservative, one is semi-conservative. Conservative method was disproved because semi-conservative method was foolproof, discovered and proved that it is half of DNA go to one of the daughter cell from the mother, half go to the other daughter cell. The other remaining half in each daughter cell is newly formed. Therefore, it is called semi-conservative type of DNA replication. Just take it down. Only this you write. Don't want to write this. This is the one indicating, showing that this may be the type of semi-conservative replication. But this is not the whole thing. It's a total story of formation of new copies. I'll give you separately. That is a five mark question. This drawing is explaining you just one mark question. It is semi-conservative replication. Drawing you need not write when they ask you one mark question. Just I wanted you to get convinced for what is meaning of semi-conservative replication. I gave this diagram. Okay. Now we will talk details of the DNA replication by the complete experimentally how they did it. Okay. So take it down how is the semi-conservative replication. And I hope many of the st uh, students are sending me the pictures and how are they maintaining notes that is really good very nice and most of you people show that sincerity with you that is really required at this age for you right so don't think nobody is watching us okay who how they will identify and all that is all secondary right first thing is how far you people are involved in your studies this is done for you right not thinking that okay they will not anyway watch someday one day I will write that will never happen right so try to write everything and you need not to show me every time proof. It is a proof for your own self. Right? Keep it with you and anytime it will help like your Bible for biology. Okay? Draw it. Okay, let's now move on to the procedure in in DNA replication which is semi-conservative replication. Okay? What all will happen in replication? First, let me list that out. Then we we'll go to the detailed process. Okay? Think that this is the double stranded DNA. This is the double stranded DNA. First, it will separate into two single strands like this. Right? By breaking the nitrogen base hydrogen bonds. So, hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen bases are broken. So all the nitrogen bases get separated, whatever it is. Here they are fused, they are together, now they are separating. First what happens is, the four plaque structure is formed by separating the single strands. These are called template strands. This is a template strand. Now on each of these strands, a new copy of DNA, another DNA is formed. This is the new copy. Based on the nitrogen bases present on this, new copy is formed. Imagine there is the nitrogen base present on the template is A, C, T, T, A, G, G, A. Something like this. Something I have written. It is not very perfectly I have written. If it is this way, then what your complementary strand will contain is its complementary nitrogen bases. A to T, C to G, T to A, T to A, A to T. G to C, G to C, A to T, like this is the So, this is a complementary strand. This is a complementary strand. And both of these are the template strands. Right? The mother DNA will first separate into two single strands, forming a fork like structure because of the DNA fork or replication fork. Now, after that, for each of these strands who got only single stranded DNA with nitrogen bases that are free, new strand is formed by binding of the nitrogen bases A, D, G, C in a complementary base pairing fashion because the complementary base pairing A to A will not bind, A to T will bind, G to C will bind. So we call it as a complementary base pairing. Okay. Now, this way it is continuing. Now, first let us study 
whether it will begin from one end to another end or not. So if you think of the DNA, to begin with, if there is a big double strand DNA, in between some openings will happen. Like this. So this is the openings formed for the replication. Hope you are understanding this. These are the areas where the DNA has unwound. It is not happening end to end how I draw there. Only one portion I have drawn here. So these parts which have opened up, only in these areas replication starts. It is not throughout from one side to another side, no. Here each area there will be formation of complementary strands. Okay? So, these portions, these structures are called as replication or replicating eyes or bubbles. They look like bubbles. Okay? So, how you understand this? I like it. I like it. No, no. What happens is devil's hand DNA like a thread, coin, highly coin thread. Right? Now, imagine one highly coined thread, you want to open it up. Uncoil the highly coined thread. How you do it? If it is around few meters length, very long it is. How do you make it unwound? Normally, if you start from one end, start opening it. Till the other end comes, there are a lot of multiple coils happening in between. You are not in a position to open them up. So, same way, DNA is few meters in length. Na? It can't open from one end to another end. In between it will start opening. Like I told you, thread is few meters. I'll appoint some 3 to 10 people in between. I say you open from this in between part. You open from T. You open from T. You open from like different different positions, different different people will be opening. Then only it can be easily opened up. Right. But it's not just opening. Again a replication is like Opening and forming new copies. See, it's opening here and new copies are formed. It's like a zipper fashion. It just opens. Once it opens, like this, imagine it's opening here. New, another zip is formed here. So, first copy was over having the black color thing. Now, another copy has one black, one red. One template, one complementary. So, from two strands of DNA, four strands are formed, forming two DNA. Right? From one DNA double strand, Two DNAs are formed with double strands, right? A zipper shape it opens and as soon it opens up, new strands are formed here, right? So this is the newly formed strand. It will happen from here, it will happen from here. This is how replication takes place, right? You just imagine how DNA was not replicated. And you will be wondering why you have to study this. Imagine any child growing must have every cell of skin should be like skin cell only. One mistake happened during copying of this, it can cause cancer. It can cause mutational disorders. Therefore, it is a very, very important type of the process in the DNA because it has to carry the genes for the children or children's cells or the daughter cells. Okay? This basic drawing you just draw. Replicating bubbles, how they look like, and what is the pattern, what is the template, what is the complementary strand. Go through that first. So you can observe once a replication is happening in upward direction, one is happening in downward direction, it happens in bi directional way. But if you think of the bacteria, imagine the bacterial DNA is circular DNA. Okay? It's a circular DNA, double strand DNA, it's like this. How it will open up? It will open up in between like this, forming replicating bubbles. One more bubble will be formed over here, another bubble will be formed over here, and the separated nitrogen bases, there will be formation of new complementary strand, one in this direction, one in this direction, one in this direction, one in this direction, this way. This is in the bacteria, because they have a circular DNA. This is in other organisms, right? So, basic drawing we just finished up. Now, we are going to start with the replicating structure, the replication for kind of view. So, now what you have learned in this? 
<coughs> replication is the process of doubling of DNA. Why the DNA should double? First thing, whenever cells are dividing, mitotic divisions, if at all any cell has skin, there is a wound, if it has to fill up, new skin cell has to be formed. Simple example I am giving you. Nothing else can be done. Muscles cannot grow here. Right? Skin cell, if the mother cell is skin cell, the daughter cells also should be the skin cell, daughter cells only. But imagine, whole of our body, we have same DNA, right? We are born from the single DNA, that is right. Single zygote. We are the DNA. But as you start embryogenesis happens, there will be differentiation of cells happening. Right? Some cells will form ectoderm, some cells form endoderm, some will form mesoderm. Those which will form ectoderm will not form anything in the muscles or anything. Ectoderm and cells form the nervous tissue, whatever it is assigned for. Right? If it is a mesoderm, it will form the connective tissue. So therefore, once they are formed, they get differentiated properly, then further they will not de differentiate. Very rarely they do it. In human cells, there is no totipotency. Therefore, every DNA has to double during the cell division. Right? But that cell division will have exact copies of DNA in the two daughter cells and that of the mother cell. Mother cell DNA should not change even with one nitrogen base also. That may lead to mutational disorders in humans. Therefore, how the replication happens, I just showed you, double cell DNA first forms the such bulbs, bubbles in between, then it start opening, one part I will enlarge that, as the template opens, template is the mother style of DNA, new copies are formed at the sides, they are called the complementary strands. Right? This way, the two strand DNA become four strand and form two double strand DNA separately. And in bacteria, as it is a circular DNA, it will open up in between and form bidirectionally new complementary DNA. Okay? Now, in the next part, I will explain you how exactly the process takes place in replication. Actually, it starts like this only. Okay. So, double strand DNA, you maintain that fork and the double stranded structure. The helical structure you have to maintain, and then at the end, fork you are going to draw. Okay. This is the double helical structure of DNA. This is the replicating fork. Right. Now, how exactly it replicates? Later, I'll tell you the various things involved in it. But first, it will unwind first. How it will unwind? It unwinds with the help of a protein and the enzyme unwindase. This is the enzyme unwindase or DNA gyrase or DNA helicase with the protein unwindase protein. Now, the two strands are separated they will be having opened the nitrogen bases like this. Right? These are the nitrogen bases that have been opened up. Right? And later you can mention which strand is which one. Okay? Now, one strand opens at 5' prime to 3' prime end and the one 3' prime to 5' prime end. Okay? Imagine it is opening at 3 prime to 5, 5 prime to 3 prime end, this is 5 prime to 3 prime end, this is 3 prime to 5 prime end, this is 3 prime end, that is the 5 prime end. Once it opens up, it has to begin the nitrogen base binding to this. Here, both are part of the templates, right? This is one template, that is another template. Okay? Now, on one of the strand, 
replication will be happening at a faster pace compared to the other one. Reason is very simple because in one strand the open up end is 3 prime end, one it is 5 prime end. Definitely there will not be same method of replication on both the strands. Right? Now, the strand that has opened up 5 prime end, there it has to begin with the 3 prime to 5 prime end, which has opened with 3 prime, it has to open, it has to start with the 5 prime to 3 prime end. This has to 5 prime to 3 prime end. Okay? Now, Always the strand will continue or it will form in only 5 prime to 3 prime OH end only. This way only it will continue. Replication happens in 5 prime to 3 prime direction, not in the reverse direction. Okay? That's a basic idea I should have. Now, if it has opened up here, if it has started, to start with, I told you one by one nitrogen bases should come and bind to this. Right? Single single nitrogen bases that are found in the nucleoplasm must come and bind here. But that will not happen. Why? Because unless there is a small strand which initiates replication, replication is not going to start. Therefore, the small RNA, if it is present in the cytoplasm, will initiate replication by binding to this. Okay? What is the way it is binding? It is binding complete if it is complementary because single strand is required here. If it is complementary only, it can bind. Suppose on the template strand you have A, C, T, G, A, A. Imagine this is the template strand nitrogen base. Then what is the complementary strand or the RNA which will start? DNA will start a replication with the help of RNA. Remember to begin with. So the one which starts here RNA will have complementary bases. For A it will have U because it is RNA I told you. A it will be U, for G it is C, T it is A, for C it is G, for A it is U. This is the small strand of RNA which is beginning the process of replication. Now, this structure we call it as the RNA primer. Remember, the name of this is RNA primer. Because it is the one which is beginning the process of replication, therefore the name is RNA primer. But RNA primer or DNA? DNA formation means RNA primer means formation of new RNA should happen. So if the RNA has to be formed, there is an enzyme named, all the enzymes are listed here, they are called polymerase enzymes. Polymerases are the enzyme that synthesize nucleic acids either DNA or RNA. If it synthesizes DNA, they are called as DNA polymerase enzymes. If it is RNA synthesizing, it is called RNA polymerasing polymerizing enzyme. So there are two types of enzymes, DNA polymerase enzyme and RNA polymerase enzyme. They will help in the formation of DNA and RNA respectively. Now I told you RNA primer is formed, in the one RNA strand is formed. Who will do this RNA strand? By the help of the enzyme, the RNA polymerase, right? This is the RNA polymerase. But it is producing the RNA based on the DNA nitrogen bases here. This is template, this is a complementary strand. So, RNA is synthesized on the base of the DNA nitrogen bases. Therefore, this enzyme is, enzyme is called DNA dependent. RNA polymerase, remember. It's not just RNA polymerase, it is DNA on the base of DNA nitrogen bases, RNA is being synthesized. Therefore, it is called DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. Now, once this is formed, now continuation is simple because it is continuing in the, from the direction 5 prime to 3 prime direction, I told you. This is always, it can continue in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Now, once RNA primer is initiated the replication, the further things become simple because there are a lot of DNA polymerase enzymes which are present in the DNA polymerase enzymes that bring the deoxyribonucleotides to this position and they elongate the 3' prime end by adding one by one nitrogen bases. Right? This is how one strand is continuously synthesized. And what are the enzymes now? Those enzymes that are bringing DNA nitrogen bases are nothing but 
DNA polymerase enzyme. This uh, this are DNA polymerase enzymes. And these DNA polymerase enzymes are two types. It is second DNA polymerase two and DNA polymerase three are going to bring the nitrogen bases complementary to the template and they are going to continue the strand elongation. Therefore, this strand continues to replicate. Right? Like this it continues to replicate further. And this will go fast. Understood? Now, this DNA formed, new DNA formed here will be filling this. Completely it is going to form new copies. It gave, is going to unwind. Again it is forming a new one more like that. It continue to form a new copy till the end. Once the complete DNA is formed, the new complementary strand, then it will be proofread by DNA polymerase 1. See, I told three enzymes, DNA polymerase 1, 2 and 3. Polymerase 2 and 3 are going to help in replication like this by binding the nitrogen bases to the complementary strand, to the template strand. So this is a newly formed complementary strand. This is the complementary strand here now. Complementary strand is formed now. Now, after the finishing of complete new strand, DNA polymerase 1 will read the newly formed strand in a reverse direction and it cuts off the wrong basis. It's called exonuclease activity. It cuts off the wrong basis and add the right nitrogen bases to that position. This we call it as proof reading or we call it as editing. Editing is to check the anything wrong has happened and correct it. So therefore DNA polymerase one among this is called as a proof reading enzyme. It helps in reading the wrong things and remove it put the right ones in speech. It's helping in exonuclease activity as well as repairing activity of the DNA. So this way one of the strands story is continue, Right? And during the process of replication some things have changed here. What has happened here? Instead of deoxyribose sugar it has started the RNA. You know, ribose sugar is there. Instead of thymine it is bound with the uracil. So during proofreading the whole of RNA primer is cut and removed by adding the deoxyribonucleotides to this position. This is how one side story happens. Means one strand replicates this way. This replication is always at a faster pace compared to the other strand. Therefore, this strand which runs fast, replicates fast is called as the leading strand. It's called the leading strand means the strand that lead the process that will be faster than the other. This is called the leading strand that replicates faster. What about the other side? Other side I told you the same story cannot repeat. Why? Because here it has already 3 prime here. Here there already it's a 5 prime end. So replication can continue only in 5 prime to 3 prime direction only. Not in the reverse way. Therefore, this RNA primer cannot be produced over there. Right? Then how it will start? Right? This was analyzed later and according to that, what will happen is, there was a scientist named Okal Zhaki. The name of the scientist I am writing here. His name is Okal Zhaki. A Japanese scientist. He identified, discovered that there are some single standard DNA fragments present in the nucleoplasm. This, these single standard DNA, if they are complementary to the template strand, this is the template strand, you already know, this is the template strand. If any single standard DNA is complementary to this, that will come and bind to this. These are called Okazaki fragments. These are the small, small fragments of DNA. They are not one one nitrogen base, these are the fragments. These are called Okazaki fragments. These are going to continue the strand. They will bind to this in 
position wherever there is complementary base. Means suppose they get the first complementary base over here, then they may bind first here, not there. But one complication is there. What is the complication? Here DNA RNA primer which is formed is hardly around 15 to 50 base pairs only, small one. So you always you label the DNA with the, with the help of the base pair sequence. Not centimeter, millimeter, we write it as BP, small BP, it is a base pairs, right? DNA base pairs of, sorry, RNA base pairs present in this RNA primer are hardly around 15 to 50 base pairs, very small one. But Okazaki fragments are very huge. They are around 100 to, to 200 base pairs in the flow carry so 1000 to 2000 base pair long, almost that long in eukaryotes. So what happens if at all that long Okazaki fragment has to bind? Now you think, if suppose 100 nitrogen base long or 100 base pair long Okazaki fragments arrives here, First problem is all the 100 bases must open up first, right? And that exactly should match the Okazaki fragment. If that 100 bases are not matching, then some more have to open. Another one will have to come. Therefore, this strand takes a long time for matching of all the hundreds to thousand nitrogen base long Okazaki fragments. That is the reason why this replicates very slow. Right? Then these, how are the Okazaki fragments found is, they 3 prime to 5 prime, they are not elongating in this way, but they are binding patch by patch, patch by patch, that is discontinuous. Right? They were earlier also, they were formed in 5 prime to 3 prime direction with their own RNA primers, they will have their own RNA primers. They will come and bind as a patches. Therefore, this Okazaki fragment binding leads to the slow replication. Therefore, this strand is called as the lagging strand. So, what is lagging strand? The strand which is slowly replicating compared to the other strand is called lagging strand. Why is it lagging strand? Because the process of replication on the template that runs in 5 prime to 3 prime direction will be different because RNA primer cannot initiate the replication over there. That is the first point. Second point, if it has to initiate, then it will have to multi elongate in only 5 prime to 3 prime direction which cannot happen yet. Therefore, after a long time, Okazaki, the Japanese scientist identified that there are some small, small fragments of RNA present in the cytoplasm or nucleoplasm, they are single standard DNA which are present freely. They, if they match or if they are complementary to the template, they can bind in a discontinuous fashion. One may bind here, one may bind here, leaving a big gap in between. So, this binding is a discontinuous process here. Here you can see continuously it's elongating. This will be happening continuously like this. But that will not happen over there. Now, one important thing here, one more thing. Here for a long time, each strand remains single standard because still Okazaki fragments arrive that position. It can't have a new or another strand immediately formed. No, it will remain single standard for a long duration. So at this time, there are chances that, imagine this is the strand I am writing here, there is C, C, C here and there is A, A here, I am sorry, there is A here, there is A here and imagine there is G, G, G. This is the strand I am writing it here. Because this C, C, C and G, G, G are complementary to each other, there is a chance that this will coil like this. When C will bind with G, C will bind with G, C will bind with G and A, A remains like this. Or this may form a loop-like structure, A, A. There is a chance that they will undergo internal binding because Okazaki fragment is taking so long duration. So, this internal binding must to, has to be stopped. This is done by some other type of proteins I write them here, their name is 
single strand binding proteins SSBP. It's called single strand binding protein. What are they? They are the proteins that bind to the open up, opened up template which is single strand and stabilizing the strand. Therefore, the name is single strand binding protein. It will bind to the single strand and because of this it will stop the internal base pairing, miss pairing of the nitrogen bases. That is called SSBP, single strand binding protein. Only when Okazaki fragments arrive here, arrive here, they will be separated, removed from this. So, you have understood both the strand formation. One is leading strand formation, one is the lagging strand formation. So then, one more thing you have to remember, here some gaps are left, I told you, it will not be so continuous, right? So many times there will be a big, big gap left here, 5 prime, then this is the gap. Another one may be formed here, there may be a gap here again. So these gaps are filled by the addition of the complementary nitrogen bases by the enzyme DNA ligase. This is the DNA ligase enzyme that help in ligation. To ligate is to bind, to cement. So DNA ligase enzyme binds the two Okazaki fragments that are nearby which had left the gap in between. Therefore, we call DNA ligase as a, it is a repairing enzyme, DNA repairing enzyme it is called. Actually, in our body also, if at all, there is any DNA repair has to happen, this will work. Because so many wear and tear will be happening, so many times DNA will be broken, DNA will be, proteins will be replicating, continuous new cells are formed. That time, there is a chance that some wrong or big, big gaps are left, that is bound by the DNA ligase enzyme. So, at the end of this, Again, DNA polymerase 1, what will it do? It will proofread the complete strand and cut off all the wrong bases in the present area and put the right ones. This is again proofreading character. Did you understand this? This is the whole process of replication. So, let me now list all the characters, all the processes, but first you draw this character. Okay? Drawing very carefully is important. This you are not going to draw this here. This is, if it left like that, what will happen actually? So now what are the processes? What are the steps involved in DNA replication? I will summarize along with the steps. Okay. First step, let me write the steps over here, this side. Okay. Steps involved in DNA replication. Okay. First is, First step, it is unwinding of DNA. DNA. So, what is unwinding of DNA? The double stranded DNA, whatever is present, this first starts unwinding here and there, forming some small, small bubble like structure that is called the replication bubbles. They are formed here and there, unwinding. Here. And unwinding takes place in presence of the enzyme DNA guided or helicase along with the unwindase protein. It unwinds, these will separate the two strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds into two single strands called templates. First step. Okay? That's the unwinding of double strand DNA. Second step, it is the formation of new complementary strands. Okay? So, how exactly formation of complementary strands take place? Here, this will not be same in both the sides. Therefore, I will write this under subheadings. A. Formation of leading strand. And second one is formation of lagging strand. So, two strands are there. One is a leading strand, one is a lagging strand. Now, why we call it so? Normally, the process of replication is the formation of new 
complementary strand on the single stranded template of mother DNA. This process of forming new complementary strand of the mother DNA strand is actually not same on both the strands because of their polarization. The two strands are oppositely polarized. Another characteristic of double strand DNA study I was giving you DNA characters anti parallel strand. Along with that, the two strands of DNA are having opposite chemical polarity. One has three prime end with OH group, one has five prime end with CH2 OH group. Because of this, the two strands will not replicate in the same manner. Right. What will happen then? First, one of the strand replicates faster to the other is called the leading strand. Another one which replicates slowly is called as the lagging strand. Now come to the leading strand. How it is formed? Leading strand has a template from 3 prime to 5 prime it is having template and we produce the complementary strand in 5 prime to 3 prime direction because at the 3 prime OH end new bases are added. Therefore it is running in the 3 prime, 5 prime to 3 prime direction it is going to elongate. Right? Now, whenever you talk about the leading strand, to begin the replication, actually as I earlier suggested that DNA strands are separated, one by one nitrogen bases come in line with that. But practically it is not so. Practically it has to start if there is a small strand which is already initiating. Otherwise, no. So, the first process happening in formation of leading strand is initiation of replication. So, each one has one one step. So, in the leading strand, so first let me explain that, then we will talk about the lagging strand. In formation of leading strand, what will happen? Initiation of the leading strand by formation of RNA primer that initiates initiation happens right first rna primer what is rna primer rna primer is a small strand of rna single strand of rna with around only 15 to 50 base pair length that if complementary binds to the leading strand through complementary base pairing okay and this rna primer is formed by the enzyme that is RNA polymerase enzyme. Already I told you, polymerase enzymes are those that synthesize either DNA or they synthesize the RNA. If suppose it is a RNA synthesizing enzyme, we call it the RNA polymerase. If it is a DNA synthesizing enzyme, we call it the DNA polymerase enzyme. Here I said RNA is formed on the DNA template. So this RNA formed is based on because of the enzyme RNA polymerase which is DNA dependent RNA polymerase because it is forming RNA based on the nitrogen basis of DNA right it's DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme initiate the formation of RNA primer right now RNA primer has bound to the first starting point of the leading strand to begin the process of replication. Now, how is it elongated? RNA primer will be elongated by the addition of DNA nu nucleotides to the 3 prime OH end of the RNA primer. Okay. Now, second step, what I can do in this is, it is the elongation of of the complementary strand. Okay. The elongation and the complementary strand get elongated with the help of DNA polymerase enzymes. DNA polymerase enzymes are of three types: polymerase one, DNA polymerase two, DNA polymerase three. Among the three, DNA polymerase two and DNA polymerase three help in the complementary base pairing. They bring the nitrogen bases which are complemented to the template. They will bind to this. This is called complementary base pairing that's happened that's happening by the enzyme DNA polymerase 2 and DNA polymerase 3. Actually among 2 and 3 polymerase 3 is the major one which contributes for replication. Therefore whenever they ask you 
the question that which enzyme is called as the replicating enzyme it is DNA polymerase 3 even polymerase 2 helps it but it is little slower but not DNA polymerase 1 ok so you continue to replicate by adding the complementary base pairs one after the other so if you are not able to understand here I will write the proper nitrogen basis only right so here you better instead of compli complicating the diagram let me write some of the nitrogen bases so whatever nitrogen bases form are here so its opposite nitrogen bases are formed here by the enzyme DNA polymerase 2 and 3 right so these are complementary base pairing enzymes these are the nitrogen bases so one of the strand is continuously produced in this fashion this is called as a leading strand now how is lagging strand formed lagging strand is a slow replicating strand it is formed by the single stranded dna that have complementary base pairs to the template they are called okazaki fragments that are measuring about 100 to 200 base pair length in prokaryotes 1000 to 2000 base pair length in eukaryotes they come and bind in a discontinuous fashion here and they will be very slow till they bind your single strand binding proteins will stabilize every strand so that newly entering strands will before they enter they should not undergo base pairing therefore SSBP will be binding once Okazaki fragments attach and form a complementary base or complementary strand this is called the lagging strand then this SSBP will be removed now the gaps left between Okazaki fragments is filled up by addition of nitrogen bases which are complementary with the help of DNA ligase enzyme DNA ligase enzyme we call it as the repairing enzyme DNA repairing enzyme it is so that's how one complementary strand is formed so that's about the story of this strand ok done learn this semi-conservative replication already explained you with the complete process we have explained right so what was it mean it meant that the double stranded DNA from the mother DNA strand or mother cell first separates into two single strands and each of the single strand new complementary strand is produced this is what we meant right then because of this how to define it because of this the two daughter cells formed we will have one original mother DNA strand one new complementary strand so if you want to define semi-conservative replication how to define it it is the process of doubling of DNA or replication of DNA in which the double cell DNA in the mother cell first separates into two single strands on each of the single standard template new complementary strand is produced in such a way that the two daughter cells formed at the end of cell division will have one original mother template strand of DNA one newly formed complementary strand of DNA this is how we have to define it definition itself everything should, it should contain that is the replication in which the double strand DNA replicates in mother cell in such a way that it forms first two single strands of templates then on each of the template strand new complementary strand is produced in such a way that the resultant daughter cells will have one original mother DNA strand called template one new complementary strand which is formed by the, based on the nitrogen basis of the template ok we have discussed that now I am going to give you an experiment which proved that it is semi-conservative replication in initial stages only I told you that replication of DNA is proved was proved to be semi-conservative by measles and stock so what is that experiment it is an experiment which carries five marks just observe what I have drawn on the board right then I will explain it first you observe this ok so what is it explaining first he measles and stall grew E. coli bacteria they did this on E. coli bacteria later it was also proved in Vicia faba plant that is a kind of faba beans beans plant also it was proved in future but first these people proved it in E. coli bacteria 
they took the E. coli bacteria and grew on the culture media containing heavy nitrogen N15. N15, normal nitrogen is N14. Right? They grew the bacteria on NH4Cl. Right? NH4Cl, NH4Cl with 15, N15, the label one. Right? This is called as a labeled nitrogen. It is not heavy. It is not radioactively labeled. It is labeled. It will be normally heavy compared to the normal nitrogen. Normal nitrogen is N14 nitrogen. This is N15 nitrogen. This NH4Cl, that is the ammonium chloride, this in, they added in the culture media of the bacteria. For many generations, they give many generations, which bacteria will multiply within 30 minutes. One completion of the cycle will happen in 30 minutes. Like that, 1, 2, 3, so many generations they finished it. Means, once at the end, what they got, all the bacteria, what they had, they were growing, were all having the DNA containing N15. That is a, the labeled or heavy nitrogen. They had heavy nitrogen with them. Right? So, N15 is drawn here. See, both the strands are having N15 and N15. So, this is also N15, this is also N15. Therefore, now, in cesium chloride, CSCl2, CSCl2, in cesium chloride medium, if you centrifuge this, they will settle down. Right? When it settles during centrifugation, this is on centrifugation in cesium chloride, this is by centrifugation. Centrifugation. So normally centrifugation, I hope you know. Do you know it or not? You just should know. It is a, a kind of machine in which they take the components, whichever it is, may not be this only. They take it in a small vials, then they put it in the if nowadays we are having the high speed centrifugations. Earlier we had manual centrifuges, right? Whether uh, you or somebody, you, the chemistry you, the teachers would have told you about centrifugation or you must be having that centrifugation. Then we, we used to have a manual centrifuge, having two test tubes, putting on the table and on the table it will be table top one and you put the two centrifuge tubes and with the handle we used to sir, revolve it, just to go away and the heavy particles go back and lighter ones will remain in the front, right? That's how to separate the two different components of a solution we can do it. This is the electronic centrifugation tube. Whenever you do it with the cesium chloride, N15 will settle at the base. This is a heavy N15. This is a band of N15. Right? Both are N15 and N15. This is the first one. We started the experiment in E. coli, E. coli, Echerichia coli bacteria with N15 which we have already grown the bacteria in N15 for a longer time, means many generations we have grown. So therefore all their DNA was having both the strands with N15 only. Now, you transfer this E. coli bacteria to normal nitrogen N14, right? When you transfer to N14, then what happened after 20 minutes when you check it, you find that one strand is N15 strand, one is N14 strand. Right? Means it is hybridized now. Right? One strand is N14 strand, one is N15 strand, here also one N15, one N14 strand. You can see here hybrid DNA, one strand N15 which is heavy, this is the one which is in the medium condition. This is how this has come, both of them are hybridized. This is N15, N14 hybrid. Right? So this is the second after 20 minutes when you, when you check the E. coli bacteria, you find the hybridized nitrogen bases. One strand will be having N15, one strand will be having N14, right? Indicating one is newly formed, which is which has taken up N14. The old one is N15, which was still there, which is still there, this is N15, right? Now, after 40 minutes you take, what happens? This strand again will separate. We are growing all of them further in N14 media only, right? NH4Cl. It is N H4 N14 Cl N14 HCl, right? And taking N H4 Cl media, you are growing them. Therefore, what you got is first one is a hybrid. 
of N14 and N15. Now continue growing in N14 normal media, then the first strand will separate, this will produce one more new strand. See, this is the original strand, you just think. New strand is formed having N14 because it has taken NH4Cl which is having N14 in this. So this has become double stranded normal DNA which is having light nitrogen. That's a light nitrogen. But one will remain hybrid because once the black one has black strand has separated and formed, this has formed both the copies black strand. But red one has to separate, no? red is showing N15. If it has separated, it has combined with N14 formed a hybrid. This is a hybrid. Hybrid of N14 and N15. But this is formed from the black strand. That is the N14 strand. Therefore, it is N14 and N14 strand only. It is a normal one. But, but another one. So this strand, when it separates, it forms like this actually. It is. This one, it is like this. Okay. Whenever this separates, first black, the red strand I have written, this is the N15 strand, which is combined to form with N14 to form a hybrid. So this is again a hybrid having N14 and N15. Because it is formed from the N15 strand by taking up N14 nitrogen bases. Then you will get two hybrids. Then last one, the black strand which is N14, this has formed with a normal N14 other strand that is the N14 N14 normal double strand structure. Right? Now in the centrifugation you find N15 is at the base. You can see N15 is a heavy one and lighter bands are formed in the front. Right? This is a light nitrogen base having N14 N14 has come in the front. So this is the total proof for semi-conservative replication. Whenever it is replicating, it will take the new strand, will take the new nitrogen bases. Old strand will be retained, one strand will be old, one will be new. Right? So if you take this, it is the old strand here. This is the old N15 strand is the old strand. Right? N14 is a new strand here. The newly formed. Right? Same thing here. N15 is a old strand, the template strand. N15 is a new complementary strand. This shows clearly semi-conservative method. You can identify clearly because there is hybridization of nitrogen bases. The same way when you take up the further division happens, further replication happens. The original one, if this is N14, it is old one and it is taking again N14 only. This is only this is the new one. Both are N14, N14 only. Right? Therefore, that is forming the semi-conservative replication. But after certain time, you can analyze how exactly old strand will be carried with one new strand, old one will be carried with one new strand. Therefore, it is a clear theorem indication of semi-conservative replication of DNA given by Meselson and Stoll. Right? This experiment is a final question to you. With the proof, explain semi-conservative replication. See, many a time students will confuse that if they ask you process of replication, if they ask you the proof for semi-conservative replication, you should properly read the question. What they have asked? Even last year I have seen some students when we are asked about the process of semi-conservative replication, they wrote this. This is not a process. This is the proof to show the replication of DNA happens in a semi-conservative method. See here. It is experimental proof of semi-conservative replication of DNA. It is just a proof. It is a proof. Right? But the whole process what I explained was that is with the replication fork. If they ask you write a note on the process of semi-conservative replication or explain semi-conservative replication means you have to take the replication fork. Explain the whole detail of the leading and lagging strand and the enzymes and the proteins everything. But when you write this, this is the proof. You have to use the labeled nitrogen bases. They are not radioactive labeled, they are the heavy nitrogen bases. That is heavy, NH, N40 is a light one, N15 is the heavy one. So, by growing the complete E. coli bacteria for many generations in the labeled nitrogen bases or the heavy nitrogen bases, N15. NH4Cl, 
then all the bacterial culture contain only N15 containing DNA. All of the bacteria, all the strands will have N15. But when you centrifuge it, you can very clearly observe the heavy bands are formed at the base. Then, next after 20 minutes, you start growing the, those bacteria which are already grown in N15. You transfer them to N14 culture media. Then they start using N14. Right? Therefore, the first 20 minutes, because 20 minutes is complete life cycle, 20 to 25 minutes, but 20 minutes only. First life cycle is over. Yeah, remember bacteria will multiply, equal will multiply, complete life cycle in 20 minutes. First 20 minutes you can see that one of the strand is N15, which was a old strand, one strand from this new one is N14. Because it has taken up our NH4Cl with N14 nitrogen bases. Therefore, one is the N15, one is N14, it's a hybrid form. Right? Now, this hybrid, two of them are showed, one the template is here, one of the template is here. This is complementary, this is complementary. After 40 minutes, again there will be one hybrid remaining here. Here one hybrid, here one hybrid, but one will be N14 complete because it has used N14 as the, the culture media from N14, the culture media, it has used N14 and then it had the primary parental strand also N14. Therefore, N14, N14, one strand is formed. But the one which is having N15, it has hybridization. It shows one N15 strand, one N14 strand. Same way N15, because there are two strands, one strand right here, one strand here. One N15 formed one N14 with this, this N15 with N14. Then, one will be again from the black one, which is N14, it has formed another total light N14 strands only, both of them. Therefore, you are getting two different bands. One is a hybrid band which is heavy band. Heavy band is totally at the end. This is hybrid which has come in the middle. Right? Hybrid one will be almost at the end. This is come to the almost middle. Light band is come at the top. Light band is having only N14. So this is the real proof for the complete explanation of semi-conservative application by measles and install. This you have to learn more better learn something about chem chemistry also learn how are the heavy nitrogen bases produced they are not adaptive they are heavy nitrogen bases formed and how do they do this and what is n14 that and all you will have to learn through chemistry also and add up here so that you can improve your subject knowledge in both of them because these are biochemical experiments they belong to biochemistry okay done so that's all the about the replication of dna and major part of molecular biology is to understand <coughs> structure of DNA, experiments to prove DNA is hereditary material. Next is the process of DNA replication. If you have done this, almost you have come out of the, or you have understood almost the genetics completely. Molecular biology, major portion is understood. Okay? So this is like your real examination to learn and understand this. Right? We can refer some of the books. I told you, whenever now you have any anyway, lot of time, I asked you to refer one of the book that is Biochemistry by Leninger. It is available in internet by Leninger. You just go through this book. It's a very nice book. What you want only that part, you can study it. And most of the times I am seeing, observing you people are not clear with the concept, you start only solving the questions. But be clear with the concept, then the question solving it becomes a simple thing. So, refer some of the higher, higher means versions, good books, always you have to read them. Like one I told you, Biochemistry by Leninger, even in first PC I told you, you refer Enzymology by Kahn and Stump, some of the books list are given. So if you get time now, anyway you will be with your mobile or your computers, your laptops, just google it and learn. These are e-books available directly, you can take them. Whatever chapter you want, you can read now. I am not saying the whole book you read it. Whatever concepts are very interesting, whatever I am explaining here, you every day keep reading, be engaged with the subject. Otherwise, by the end of the day, you, what you have done is you are just listening to the chapters. You are listening to the lectures, not you have understood anything. Therefore, learn, work on them, 
then be with the subject almost every time. Right? You, whenever you are free, you think about it. Okay? Man told me something about learning. Let me go through. Right? I do. I need not give you this is your homework. No. Homework is all the time busy with the subject, being with the subject. Right? What else you have here? Eating food and sleeping is not an issue. Every animal will do that. What else you have is your brain. Utilize the brain and work on all these here. These are really beautiful books. And even for human physiology, I told you, learn Guyton. Human Physiology by Guyton. Those, that's a medical book, but still it's a very beautiful book to study. Very simple language. So always start enjoying reading the books. Right? Not only just, okay, when I'm going to have my heart at this, okay, I like this, only reproduce this, only. No, don't become like machines. Be like human beings. Human beings have, has, have such a huge brain, 1.5 kg, with all the active neurons. Okay? Work on that. Study. This you understand with extra knowledge, then you will go to the top level. Right? Not only in the rank, in the subject knowledge. Right? There are a lot of opportunities after this. Okay? Love it. Okay? Bye.